credibility gap. The president's top gun on corporate cheating faces questions about his own business past. Still untouchable, critics say the proposed crackdown will not punish white-collar criminals. The Florida Fix, a new high-tech system to avoid hanging chads. And the magic pill for surviving a nuclear disaster. Does your state believe in it or not? This is the CBS Evening News with Thalia Ashouris. Good evening, everyone. President Bush, who last week proposed plans to get tough on corporate wrongdoing, has been dogged by criticism for not being tough enough on the business community to which he has strong ties. Well, matters got even worse today. The man he appointed to direct the new task force on corporate crime and responsibility is facing credibility questions of his own. Joey Chen reports. Good afternoon. The man President Bush tapped to lead his new SWAT team on corporate crime, Deputy Attorney General Larry Thompson, now faces questions about his ties to a troubled credit card firm, the Providian Corporation. When Thompson was on its board, the company was forced to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to settle charges of consumer fraud. The news surfaced as the president, in his radio address today, again portrayed himself as the leader in the fight against corporate cheaters. I am creating a new task force at the Justice Department to aggressively investigate corporate crime. The White House spent the entire week on the defensive. The president repeatedly faced questions about profits he made through his relationship with the Harkin Energy Corporation in 1990. Mr. Bush is finding that what was once seen as his greatest asset may prove his greatest liability. He sold to the American people the idea that he was a business person. He was not a politician. He knew how to run a company. And even conservatives acknowledge that the president's business skills and contacts are creating credibility problems. This scandal ex potentially exposes the Achilles heel of this administration, their coziness to corporate power. Four members of the president's cabinet are former CEOs of major corporations. The one facing the most scrutiny is the vice president. He ran the oil services company Halliburton Corporation, whose accounting practices under his watch are now under investigation. Yet he is one of the leading voices advising the president on reform. It is a fine line for the administration, trying to crack down without losing the support of corporate donors. He's going to have to really bite the hand that has fed him in the past big business. And the president is feeling the pressure to move quickly. Congress is rushing to pass a tough crackdown bill, and the White House is getting ready to sign off on it before the parade passes by. Joey Chen, CBS News, the White House. Legislation is one thing, legal muscle is another. Whatever corporate crime bill is enacted, the test of its toughness will be determined in the courts. And that's where the real challenge will be. Lee Cowan explains. After a week that saw the Dow lose more than 7% of its value, we're short 20 at 38 cents. Investors are looking for blood. It's like the 80s all over again. It's like enough is enough. Scandal and corporate collapses have shaken consumer confidence. But while the CEOs of embattled companies like Enron may have appeared before Congress... Will you raise your right hand, please? They have not appeared before a judge, and no one has gone to jail. Defrauding investors is a serious offense, and the punishment must be as serious as the crime. The president wagged his finger at Wall Street this week, proposing doubling the maximum jail term for certain types of fraud. But critics argue that plan is more posturing than policing. I think it's literally laughable to suggest that a group of executives would sit down and say, we can cook the books because if we get caught, we're only going to jail for 20 years. But you know what? If they raise it to 25 years, it's just not worth it. On Capitol Hill, there appears to be bipartisan support to be even tougher. But investors who have lost millions and want to see handcuffs may not get their wish. I think there's a limit to what the, the government can do, particularly the federal government. Catherine Rudy Harrigan suggests that stiffer penalties are all well and good, but it's a corporate culture of greed that has to be addressed. And those with the power to change that are the investors themselves. Sell the stock. Walk away. Make it difficult for those companies to get money in the future. It's when they get easy money and nobody slaps their hand for misbehaving that they think this kind of behavior is condoned. In the past, juries have been less than willing to convict white-collar criminals, but that perception is clearly changing. As the market goes down, the ire goes up, and so does the desire to make someone pay. Lee Cowan, CBS News, New York. 
Tension between nuclear rivals India and Pakistan was revived today after a deadly attack in disputed Kashmir. Gunmen attacked a shanty town in Jammu in the Indian-controlled sector, killing at least 25 Hindus. Authorities say the gunmen, who were disguised as Hindu holy men, are suspected of belonging to a Pakistan-backed Islamic group. In Russia, a day of mourning for victims of last week's mid-air plane collision over Germany. Thousands of relatives and friends attended funeral services for 28 of the dead, 26 of them children. Germany's deputy foreign minister said a memorial will be erected at the crash site. The air traffic controller who was on duty at the time of that collision offered his condolences to the relatives of the victims. He is on medical leave as authorities continue to investigate the accident, one that may have been inevitable because of Europe's air traffic control system. Richard Roth has more. Despite open borders, a common market, and a common currency, Europe still has a patchwork system of more than 40 different control centers for traffic in the air. On a 2,800-mile flight in the U.S., for instance, from New York to Los Angeles, an airline pilot would routinely talk with six or seven air traffic control centers along the way. But a European pilot on a flight one-third the length, say, from Brussels to Rome, could receive radio instructions from nine air traffic control centers en route. Experts say that's not inherently unsafe, but the mid-air collision over Germany this month has drawn attention to a long-standing criticism of Europe's air traffic control system. It just isn't efficient if you have too many changes to make. There are possibilities that there might be some time lag which might be critical at some stage. Single Skies is the name of a plan to change that by putting central government, the European Union, in charge of all the continent's air traffic. We are not uh, using the skies as a common resource and we are still uh, fighting with uh, lack of coordination and so on and this is bad for the industry, this is bad for safety. But it would take at least two years to implement single skies and there's opposition, especially from current air traffic controllers. In recent strikes, they've protested anticipated job cuts, which they claim would compromise safety. The air traffic control systems have been under some strain insofar as, first of all, there's a pressure to reduce costs, and secondly, there's a pressure to add new controllers into the system. Pressure not likely to ease. European officials say one out of every four flights today is delayed by crowded skies, and air traffic is still growing. Richard Roth, CBS News, London. This was Election Day in Palm Beach County, Florida, but this time none of the votes counted. In an effort to avoid a replay of the last presidential election, county officials staged a mock election to test new touchscreen voting machines. Bobby Harley reports. These days, I don't have a computer or anything, so I can try it. We want you to try it. Once embattled Palm Beach County Elections Supervisor Teresa Lepore has taken her show on the road. That easy? Very good. Very good. Thank you. In fact, Lepore is working to make sure every single Palm Beach County resident tries it before the new system is used in primary and general elections later this year. A touch screen voting machine. The first reaction for a lot of them is they don't want anything to do with it. Um, they're afraid of it. But what's more frightening for this Florida community is a repeat of the 2000 presidential election when punch card ballots and hanging chads made it the national joke. Well, certainly we're not going to be looking at any more punch card ballots, but uh, they may be holding up uh, computer chips now. I don't know. But already the new machines have critics, even pending legal action. During municipal elections earlier this year, the touchscreen system registered a 3% undervote. That means 3% of those who showed up failed to actually cast a vote, possibly due to machine error. That's enough to have even the politicians who paid $15 million for the equipment to question just how reliable it is. Okay, it's not working because your thumb was on here. W would you buy a Rolls Royce and accept 3% failure? But in a part of the country known for its elderly population... Easy? Yeah, she, she couldn't see and I came here. <laughs> the error may be more than mechanical. I joke, the perfect voting system does not involve humans. Next time around, the hope is that if something does go wrong in the voting booth... Whoops. It won't happen here. Bobby Harley, CBS News, Palm Beach County.
Still to come on the CBS Evening News, liquid nicotine, why you can't get the latest stop smoking aid at the store. Also, the fish that is threatening to devour Chicago and the Great Lakes. And keeping an eye on teenage drivers, even when they're alone in the car. You know when you're not feeling like yourself. Oh. You're tired all the time. Oh. You may feel sad, <laughs> hopeless, and lose interest in things you once loved. You may feel anxious, can't even sleep. Your daily activities and relationships suffer. You know when you just don't feel right. Now here's something you may not know. These are some symptoms of depression, a serious medical condition affecting over 20 million Americans. While the cause is unknown, depression may be related to an imbalance of naturally occurring chemicals between nerve cells in the brain. Zoloft, a prescription medicine, works to correct this imbalance. When you know more about what's wrong, you can help make it right. Only your doctor can diagnose depression. Zoloft is not for everyone. People taking medicines called MAOI shouldn't take Zoloft. Side effects may include dry mouth, insomnia, sexual side effects, diarrhea, nausea, and sleepiness. Zoloft is not habit-forming. Talk to your doctor about Zoloft, the number one prescribed brand of its kind. Zoloft. When you know more about what's wrong, you can help make it right. If you've had a heart attack or a stroke, the last thing you need is another one sneaking up on you. After all, you've got better things to do. I know. In my case, I had a stroke. That's why I talked to my doctor about Plavix. He told me Plavix is a prescription pill that can help protect you from a heart attack or stroke if you've recently had one, or if you have poor circulation in the legs causing pain. Plavix is proven to help keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots, which helps keep your blood flowing. This can help protect you from another heart attack or stroke. If you have a medical condition that is causing bleeding, such as a stomach ulcer, you should not use Plavix. Side effects include itching, rash, diarrhea, and bruising. Additional rare but serious side effects could occur. Ask your doctor. Taking Plavix once a day helps protect me. Find out if Plavix can help protect you from another heart attack or stroke. What's as gentle as Senecott natural vegetable laxatives? With 100% natural Senna, Senecott tablets offer overnight relief from occasional constipation gently. Senecott works gently, works overnight. While we're celebrating 50 years at Publishers Clearinghouse, the summer's biggest party could be at your house. August 29th, the Prize Patrol will surprise a new million dollar winner. Enter by mail or at PCH.com and it could be you. Hey, I guess somebody's had a busy day today. Well, make sure back pain doesn't cramp your schedule tomorrow. Grab a Thermacare Air Activated Heat Wrap before you hit the sack. It gets warm and stays warm, deeply relaxing tight muscles. So circulation flows in, helping pain flow out. So, by the next day, you're moving and grooving. Oh yeah, all day long. Thermacare Heat Wraps. Find them in the pain reliever aisle. The heat is on at the NFL Quarterback Challenge and the Kart Grand Prix of Cleveland. Plus, Lance Armstrong drives for a fourth straight tour de France tomorrow on CBS. A second white police officer reportedly punched a black teenager during a videotaped arrest in California. The video shows one officer slamming the suspect onto a patrol car and punching him. But the Los Angeles Times says his partner also admitted in an official report that he hit the suspect before the tape started. For millions of smokers wanting to quit, the decision by 17 states this year to raise cigarette taxes could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. In the meantime, one widely advertised alternative to smoking has been stubbed out, at least for now. Mika Brzezinski explains. For 30 years, Ray to Rule smoked more than a pack a day. Quitting was no easy task, so we turned to the nicotine patch and counseling. I tried once before and I was unsuccessful. I lasted like a week and it just didn't work. A California-based company had hoped to begin selling Nica water later this month. A colorless, odorless, nicotine-laced bottled water that was until the FDA last week banned its sale. I think it's a superior, healthy alternative to smoking. I myself smoked normally 40, 40 cigarettes a day. With nickel water, I'm now down to 12 cigarettes a day. Quick Test 5, which makes nickel water, has been promoting the product as a dietary supplement, a convenient way for smokers to get their nicotine when they can't light up. But the FDA ruled that nickel water is a drug, not a dietary supplement. 
Like nicotine patches and gums, it must be tested for safety and effectiveness before it's sold. Before nicotine-laced water is sold to the American public, it should be subject to the same kinds of health and safety tests that nicotine gum and nicotine patches have been subjected to. I'm actually uncomfortable about this concept. Lirio Covey runs a smoking cessation clinic. She also agrees the product, which contains two to four milligrams of nicotine per bottle, should be regulated as a drug. The fact of the matter is it hasn't been tested. We don't know if it can do what they're saying it will do. I think they're more interested in controlling the marketplace for nicotine patches and gum. While Nicka Water won't make it to store shelves anytime soon, Rachel Rule would welcome any product that may help the smoking public. Anything that, that can help is definitely something that you want to look at because it's very hard to do it on your own. It's just extremely difficult. Quick Test 5 maintains its product works, but there's no word yet on whether it'll appeal the FDA's decision. Mika Brzezinski, CBS News, New York. New warnings today that a monster breed of fish is dangerously close to threatening the Great Lakes. Super-sized Asian carp have made their way from the Mississippi River to within 25 miles of Lake Michigan. The fish originally brought in to help clean catfish ponds can grow to be 5 foot long, 120 pound underwater lawnmowers. One official says they could destroy a $4.5 billion sport fishing industry. The concern is that if they uh, enter the uh, uh, Great Lakes, that they'll outcompete the, the native fish for the food base. U.S. and Canadian officials called for the Army Corps of Engineers to build a second electrical barrier to try to scare the invading carp away from the lakes. The orphan orca whale that won the heart of Seattle is heading home to Canada and hopefully a family reunion, but not on her own. A high-speed catamaran is whisking the whale to waters off British Columbia where scientists hope to reunite her with her pod. Coming up next on the CBS Evening News, can a pill protect you from nuclear disaster? Do you know the warning signs of osteoporosis? Unfortunately, there aren't any. That's why I got a bone density test. It's quick and painless. Ask your doctor about a bone density test and if Fosamax once weekly is right for you. Fosamax Once Weekly is for postmenopausal women at risk for or with osteoporosis. It's proven to help reverse bone loss. You should not use Fosamax if you have certain disorders of the esophagus, are unable to stand or sit upright for 30 minutes, have severe kidney disease or low blood calcium. Use with caution if you have stomach or digestive problems. Stop taking Fosamax and tell your doctor if you develop new or worsening heartburn difficult or painful swallowing or chest pain because these may be signs of serious upper digestive problems. Why wait? Ask your doctor about a bone density test. Fosamax once weekly, proven to help reverse bone loss. There is a rhythm to life. We sleep at night and wake in the morning. It's this sleep cycle that helps keep us in a healthy balance. But for millions of Americans, sleep doesn't always come easy. Fortunately, there's Ambien. Ambien is a prescription sleep aid that can help you get a full night's sleep. While natural sleep is best, Ambien helps you fall asleep fast, stay asleep longer, and wake rested and refreshed, not groggy the next morning. No wonder Ambien is the number one prescribed sleep aid in America. Until you know how Ambien will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Side effects may include drowsiness, dizziness, and diarrhea. You shouldn't take it with alcohol. Patients who abuse prescription sleep aids may become dependent. Prescription sleep aids are most often taken for 7 to 10 days as needed. Your doctor will advise you about taking them longer. Take Ambien only when you can devote a full 7 to 8 hours to sleep and wake rested and ready to start your day. Talk to your doctor about Ambien. Ambien works like a dream. At Jones Market, we work a long, hard day, so I need the strongest hold I can get. So I switch to fix it at free. I can have chowder for lunch and fresh corn for dinner. For a strong, long hold, fix it and, and forget it. Why does my doctor recommend Citrusel? Because it's different. The fiber in Metamucil can cause excess gas, but the fiber in Citrusel won't. And people prefer its taste two to one over Metamucil. Citrusel, available in caplets. See it live. See it local. See it first. KCTV 5 News at 4.30 p.m. First in News. 
New Jersey today became the second state to start handing out potassium iodide pills to people who live or work near a nuclear power plant. They're supposed to protect them in the event of a meltdown or an attack. But are they enough or too much? That's tonight's Weekend Journal. Do not take the pills until you're instructed to do so. This was pill day for residents of Ocean County, New Jersey. State health officials handed out free potassium iodide tablets to residents who live within 10 miles of the Oyster Creek nuclear facility, just in case. Hopefully we won't be making use of them, but better safe than sorry. The giveaway was part of a federal program aimed at protecting people exposed to radiation from nuclear plant accidents. Potassium iodide has been found to prevent thyroid cancer, especially in children, by blocking the absorption of cancer-causing radioiodine. The risk is extremely small, but the efficacy, the effectiveness of potassium iodide has been well established. Studies of the Chernobyl nuclear accident in Russia in 1986 showed children who took potassium iodide had dramatically lower incidence of thyroid cancer. So after September 11th and the ongoing fears of a possible terrorist attack on a nuclear facility, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is offering states free supplies of pills for residents who live within 10 miles of a nuclear plant. 33 states qualify for the program, but six months after announcing the giveaway, only 16 states have accepted the offer. Officials in Arkansas refused the federal offer, citing, among other things, the pill's limited effectiveness. Uh, potassium iodine only really protects the thyroid, protects no other parts of the body. The pills work by flooding the thyroid with natural iodide and blocking the absorption of cancer-causing radioiodine. Health officials in Illinois, with 11 nuclear power plants more than any other state, turned the offer down because they felt it presented a false sense of security. We believe that people may put too much faith in what exactly these pills can and cannot do, and it would maybe, and we feel that it could hamper our evacuation plans. The NRC says the pills should be used as a supplement to sheltering and evacuation. Even the company that makes the potassium tablets is adding to the controversy, suggesting that people living outside the 10-mile limit should be getting the pills as well. From the nuclear utility standpoint, that is what is expedient, and that is their primary of responsibility. But their own documentation indicates that hundreds of miles is really the scenario where radioactive iodine can be carried. What's the justice on this? But today, New Jersey officials seem comfortable with their decision to distribute the pills. And don't worry, it will distract residents from the overall threat of a nuclear accident or attack. Evacuation is far more important than the pills, and we're using this pre-distribution of pills as a means of educating the public how to evacuate and where to go. Under pressure, Illinois has now announced it will distribute pills donated by the nuclear industry to avoid what it sees as excessive regulation in the federal program. Potassium iodide can also be bought over the counter at drugstores, but many are reporting shortages. We'll be back in a moment. Here, kitty, kitty, watch the birdie. <laughs> oh, look at this. Why would Windex make a wipe? Because they're the quick, easy way to shine just about anything. You'll make a net up. Introducing new Windex wipes. For a streak-free shine, no leading wipe can touch. New Windex wipes shine just about anything, especially glass. This is too easy. <laughs> Reach for new Windex wipes. A wipe that shines. And new jobs in a family home. design and incredible power, Gateway's new computers are of great value, starting at just $5.99. We also have other incredible deals, including a free scanner or printer with the purchase of select models. Call 1-800-GATEWAY for details. I've been playing this game since I was seven. I love the smell of the grass, the feel of an old leather glove. Then my knees started acting up. The pain got worse, and so did my game. I thought my playing days were over. Nothing I tried worked long enough until my doctor told me about a leave. Two a leave can stop pain all day long. He said it'd take eight Tylenol to do that. Now I can spend all day playing the game I love. Hey, I said I loved it. I didn't say I was good at it. A leave, all day strong, all day long. I quit. I quit. It's time to quit. Quit the cycle of irregularity with Metamucil Daily Fiber Therapy. I quit for good. 
And you can, too. Metamucil Daily Fiber Therapy. Get regular, stay regular. The Dirty Moth. Yeah, we're in town tonight, and we want you to sing Lee. Yeah! yeah! Sometimes you gotta have the Mac. Craft Easy Mac. Heartburn this painful has caused my acid reflux. Get Gaviscon. It's different. Gaviscon quickly forms a soothing, protective barrier that helps keep acid down for hours. Gaviscon. Fast relief from acid reflux. Ever wonder what's in a bottomless bucket of crab? Well, maybe a whole lot more than you thought. Red Lobster's Bottomless Bucket of Crab. All the hot, steamy snow crab legs you can eat. Now at Red Lobster. The roof over your head. Do you know how to protect it in a hot real estate market? An Eye on America series has answers starting Monday on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. To a teenager, a car has always been a symbol of freedom. As the Beach Boys sang, she'll have fun, fun, fun till her daddy takes the T-bird away. Well, now a new technology is being tested that allows teens to keep the car, but as Sandra Hughes found out, take some of the freedom away. Before 17-year-old Ryan Evans starts his car, he turns on his black box. The newest technology in the battle to put the brakes on unsafe teenage driving. It, it feels like my mom's, like, right next to me, just because, like, I don't like, I can't, if, if it, like, beeps, I can't argue with it. When the black box beeps, Ryan is doing something wrong, taking a turn too hard or putting the pedal to the metal. When I first got the system, like, for every turn I used to make, I used to always get a beep, and I've learned to, like, slow down my turns. And... Ryan Evans is one of a handful of teens testing Road Safety International's black box. When it becomes available for sale this fall, parents can have it installed in their teen's car and then, using a memory chip, download their teen's driving record on their home computer. Just a reminder to them, it's the conscience, that extra conscience on their shoulder that saying, okay, I better watch it. Car crashes are the leading cause of serious injury and death among 15 to 19-year-olds. Statistics like that have led more than 30 states to beef up training requirements for teen drivers. And parents are looking for any way possible to keep kids safe, especially when 22% of teens don't wear seatbelts. If the teen doesn't have a seatbelt on, we're going to continually blast him with an audio warning to put it on. The idea has already worked in changing the behavior of some ambulance drivers who use the black box. Aggressive driving and accidents are down. And for an additional charge, parents will be able to add a global positioning system to the black box and with a keystroke, locate their teenage driver over the internet. It's invasive, perhaps, but if you tell it, you're, if there's parameters where your child is not supposed to drive, it gives you the ability to know that he's obeying you. But driving experts warn parents not to become complacent. There's no replacement for having a parent or other supervisor in the car. The black box may not replace mom and dad, but with it, teenage drivers know everything they do behind the wheel is being watched. Sandra Hughes, CBS News, Camarillo, California. And that's the CBS Evening News. Tomorrow on Sunday morning, dial T for telemarketers and the trouble with them and a profile of Broadway songwriter Stephen Sondheim. Then on Face the Nation, the embattled head of the SEC, Harvey Pitt. I'm Thalia Asuras, CBS News, New York. Good night, everyone. For news 24 hours a day, go to cbsnews.com, AOL keyword, CBS News. Kansas City's most dangerous roads, what makes them unsafe? Where are the next traffic accidents likely to happen? Watch Dangerous Intersections, starting Monday on KCTV 5 News at 4.30 p.m. Live, local, first. I swear, officer, I did not just take this Toyota. I mean, it sure feels like I did. They gave me this unbelievable deal. And I have to admit, I thought, you know, this must be a mistake. Both 4Runner and RAV4 are very affordable with financing as low as 1.9%. Or get $1,750 customer cash on 4Runner. It'll feel like you're getting them for a steal. Look, I even have the receipt. I was just going to tell you to slow it down, pal. Nice vehicle, though.
Evening News First. KCTV 5 News at 4.30 p.m.